All right, so here's an example of the AP Physics 2 translation between representations. And if you don't know what this question is about, this FRQ type, which is new for the 2025 exam, um, go look at the AP Physics 1, where I kind of break down uh, what are the expectations and the translation between representations FRQ. So here we have a glass block has a semicircular section removed, as shown in the figure. The air has an index of refraction, so this is going to be based off of uh, optics. The glass has an index of refraction greater than one. Two rays of monochromatic light of frequency F0 travel parallel to each other in the glass block and are incident on glass boundary points A and B. Both rays refract the glass air boundary. And the diagram sketch the pathway. So remember that first part is we're sketching a diagram in the TBR. In this case, it's to sketch uh, um, a, 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 the, the, how it's going to bend. Now remember, whenever, let's see. When we are going from a denser material to a less dense material, so we're going to a smaller index of refraction, right? We are going to bend away from the normal. So here they've drawn the normal vector for you. So you're going to make this angle bigger like this. So it's going to bend upwards in this case because it has to be a bigger angle uh, after it exits the ray. So I think you just want to draw, let's see, sketch the path of the ray in the air after the ray. So you just got to draw this part right here. It's going to re-enter in, but that's okay. I don't think you have to draw that part. This one, again, we got to bend away from the normal again. And so we got to make the angle bigger. So again, it's going to be going to be like this. Now, th because the normal vector is so different, th these shouldn't be parallel, right? Well, let me think. Should they be parallel? No, they're not going to be parallel because the normal vector is a different angle. So the ratio of the angles will make it... Um, um, yeah, so I would just make it bend upward, but it, I don't know if it matters if you make it parallel or not parallel. Um, it, it, this should be steeper in some way. Is that anger? Yeah, I think it's just I think in the scoring they're just gonna make sure that it, you know this is like kind of moving at a steeper angle like that. Okay, so then the next step is a derivation. So we want to find a, an equation for the change in the wavelength of the light when it passes from glass into the air. Express your terms of f zero, ng, and fundamental constants. Begin your derivation by writing a fundamental physics principle or equation from the reference information. Okay, so basically, we are going to start with some kind of equation or some principle, but it's just a derivation like you normally would do. Now, if we're talking about the frequency, and we want the change in the wavelength here. So how do we know about the wavelength? Well, there's two things that we know. We know that light, the speed of light, is equal to lambda times the frequency. That's one thing we know. The other thing we also know about when it is it the kind of the Snell's law or the index of refraction affects the speed of light. Remember, in glass, it goes slower than the speed of light. So, in um, when it passes from glass into the air, so in the air, C in the air is equal to lambda in the air times F0. Remember, the frequency, when it passes mediums, the frequency doesn't change. The frequency of the light remains constant. That's how the light was created. That doesn't change, but the wavelength can change because the speed of light changes. C of the glass is equal to uh, ng. Or, so, so, so speed in the air, speed in the air is just speed of light. Okay, so speed of light uh, in glass. It's the index of refraction times c is how much. Uh, actually, you got to divide it because it got to go slower. So it has to be c divided by the index of refraction, right? That's how fast it's going to go, and that's going to equal lambda in the glass times F0. Now, if we want the change in the wavelength, we're just going to do the wavelength in the air minus the wavelength in the glass, right? And so that's going to be C over F0 minus this gun is going to be C over NG F0 because the speed of light does slow down and NG is greater than one. So that's how I remember. I don't remember if it's multiply or divide. I just remember whether I think it should be bigger or not, right? And that would be sufficient. You can factor out if you want to. You can factor out C over F0, and it makes it look like 1 minus 1 over NG. So you could write it like that as well, but this would be perfectly acceptable. Okay, then we got to sketch a graph. That's the third part of the TBR question. Is a laser shoot in a line, a uh, horizontal beam line of glass block. The height H of the beam is varied, uh, and the angle theta of the refracted beam and the normal is measured for several values of H. Um... Horizontal beam of light on the glass block is shown in figure three. Um, let's see, where's figure three? Uh, I didn't grab a picture. Let me grab a picture of figure three real quick. All right, so here's the figure three that I forgot to grab. All right, so laser is used to shine on the light. The height of the beam is varied as a function of theta r with the refracted beam for several values of h and the value of sine theta r. Okay, 
So we want to find um, find the th sine theta r uh, as a function of h. So first we have to kind of figure out what the index. So how do we find the refracted angle, right? The refracted angle is the Snell's law. So we're going to n air times sine of the incident angle is going to be n. Oh, sorry, we're in glass over here. Glass is n air times sine of the refracted angle. But this is just 1. So sine of theta r is just equal to n glass, like that constant, times sine of theta i. Or they call it ng. Sorry, not n glass, but ng sine of theta i. Right. So that's one thing. So then we then it's really a question. It's a constant times the sine of theta i. So how do we figure out theta i here? Well, uh, as a function of h, I kind of always think about it this. Here, the incident angle is going to be zero. So when h is equal to zero, theta i is going to equal zero, right? And then what you want to think about is like, okay, so this is this is respect to the horizontal. This is theta i right here. Right, and so what we're trying to figure out is what is the sine of theta i. So sine of theta i, this were a unit circle, like this is this would be like the y value, right? So sine of theta i, or you could think of it as a right triangle, like this is r. So sine of theta i is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, so it's the height over the radius. So that means sine theta i is equal to h over r. So that means sine of theta r is equal to ng times h over r. Right, and so this is ng over r times h is sine of theta r. Uh, yeah, like this. So that's our relationship. This is the y variable to the x variable. This is gonna be a straight line. It's a straight line um, with the ratio ng over r, and oh, there's r. So ng. Let's see. So the slope of our line because this is our x variable, right? This is x. This is y. So this is just a straight line because it's just linear in terms of h. So the slope is going to equal ng over r, right? Um, so then it's some number bigger than 1. So let me think about where we want the... Where we want this to be. So let's just think about it. If ng was 1, then the slope would be 1 over r. This point to here to here would be 1 over r, right? But it's bigger than 1 over r, right? Because this number is bigger than 1. So it's got to be some slope that's bigger than that. So it's got to be like this. Because from there to there would be 1 over r. And so this has got to be bigger. Now, how much bigger? I don't know. It just depends on what number. I don't think they told you anything. They just said it's bigger than 1. So you can probably make any straight line slope that does that. Indicate whether the sketch you drawn in part C is consistent with the rays drawn in part A and briefly justify it. That's the fourth part. Fourth part can be um, whether or not it might compare against the two. So in this case, they want you to compare whether or not um, the angles are, are, are steeper. And so, like, if you look at this angle to the horizontal, you know, you should have made this, I should have made this angle steeper. So maybe, you know, I can go back and change my answer now, but... But you should say, I mean, if you want to show consistency, yeah, the angle is greater there at a higher height. So yes, because the angle of the ray, actually, they just want the refracted angle. Sorry, the refracted angle is better. I think my original one's better. But this angle here is greater than this angle here, right? So the refracted angle is greater. The angle of the ray in the refracted ray in uh, A is greater than the angle for B, and A is at a larger height, it's at a higher point. Just connect the idea that it's at a higher point, and so the angle is larger, right? And so that, that's all you have to show. And you want to just show that angle specifically. Um, and that covers that one.